Hey, I'm Sam. Welcome to Brickwell Pictures. Today I'm trying out something a little bit different. I am a film critic and I talk about, you know, lots of movies, lots of films, lots of, uh, I, I'm slinging criticism left and right, you know. So I thought maybe it would be interesting to sort of critique the critics because I, I feel like that doesn't really happen. So today, instead of reviewing some movies, I'm going to re review the reviews of some movies. And I'm going to pick one critic in particular. Uh, and I might do other critics in the future, but I've always heard that the world's worst film critic is this guy named Armand White. Now, I haven't actually read any of his reviews myself, so I'm going to be seeing if he's really as bad, if he really is the world's worst film critic. So I just pulled up his profile on National Review, which is the site that he writes for, at least primarily, I guess. And National Review seems to be a right wing, like look at this, they're fucking promoting Dr. Oz on here, Jesus Christ. I can also see that he has a new book called Make Spielberg Great Again. So, is Armand White MAGA? Because if so, I'm already prepared to label him the world's worst film critic. I don't think there's many MAGA film critics out there. No, but I'm seeing he has also written for Variety, New York Times, Slate. So th those are all huge publications. So I don't know how he could write for publications that big and be the world's worst film critic. So maybe, maybe he just has exceptionally bad taste, but he's a really good writer. Maybe that's what it is. I, I don't know. We'll find, I still haven't read any of his reviews yet. I'm going to be reacting to these in real time and just giving my, my, my gut reaction, my first impressions on, on his reviews. Okay, so Roger Ebert wrote a piece called Not in Defense of Armand White. <laughs> oh, but uh, okay, he previously posted an entry in defense of Armand White's review, District 9. Overnight, I received reader comments causing me to rethink that entry. I was not familiar enough with his work. It is baffling to me that a critic could praise Transformers 2 but not Synecdoche, New York. <laughs> That's crazy. Or praise Death Race, but not There Will Be Blood. I am forced to conclude that White is, as charged, a troll. A smart and knowing one, but a troll. Okay, so Roger Ebert thinks he's a troll. Is he just a troll, or does he just have exceptionally bad taste? Because I, I think that is definitely a possibility. I, I, I have known people who love Transformers 2 and hate art house stuff. Like, I've known people who, I don't think I've seen Synecdoche, New York, but would not like it. They don't like anything that's like, they would just label it as pretentious. Whereas they think Transformers 2 is super fun. They love seeing the robots and effects and stuff. So maybe he just has really bad taste. Um, okay, let's go ahead and actually read one of his reviews here. He has a piece called Light Year is Consumerism for Kids. That's kind of true. That's kind of a base take. I'm not going to read that piece. So I'm looking for his reviews, not his like opinion pieces. He wrote for NPR too. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I mean, so he definitely has, has a lot of credits. So it's clear this column here is his rating, and then this is the critic consensus, which is a tomato meter. Like, so he agrees on Don't Worry Darling, but he is run on the certified fresh The Woman King. Okay, here's The Northman. Here's his review for The Northman. Let's see. Oh, wait, what? By Kyle Smith. What the fuck? Why was this on Armand White's Rotten Tomatoes? Okay, this one is actually by him. A woke, Oscar-ready Shakespeare update. What the fuck is woke about the tragedy of Macbeth? It's fucking Shakespeare. What is woke about it? What could possibly be woke about it? He just called No Country for Old Men a comedy, which is just patently false. Cohen fashions a, quote, colorblind, end quote, adaptation starring Denzel. Oh, is that why he calls it woke? Just because a black man is playing Macbeth? Is that woke? That's woke, is it? It's a fucking Shakespeare adaptation. What the fuck? Who gives a shit what a race the guy is? Yeah, the guy's just upset that there are black performers in prominent roles. That's such a dumb thing. To... Is that like his only problem with the movie? He is calling what is universally agreed as the Coen Brothers' worst movie. A more brilliant comedy on race traditions versus venal liberalism than Get Out. I'm starting to think Armand White is, is just racist. He's one of these right-wing guys that completely sells out everything to, to push this woke, anti-woke messaging, and that's his whole angle. This mixed-race Macbeth. So it really, his whole problem is just that Denzel Washington, a black guy, is playing Macbeth. That's his whole problem with the movie. Cohen even casts a sexually ambiguous contortionist to play all three CGI witch, witch, witches. An actor being sexually ambiguous is a problem for him, again. The character's a witch! 
Why the fuck do you care if the witch, the actor playing the witch is straight or how they gender identify? What the fuck does it matter to you? Okay, the Batman. I'm not a huge fan of the Batman. This is the recent uh, 2022 The Batman. He's calling Christopher Nolan's Batman movies depraved. What in the world is depraved about Nolan's Batman movies? They're like extremely mainstream blockbusters. What is depraved about them? Oh, and of course, he's a fan of the Zack Snyder ones. <laughs> this is a slap in the face to Snyder, who brought moral and artistic potential to the franchise. Moral? It's Batman! Well, here's something I agree with him on. Marvel movies are a juggernaut of childishness. I do kind of agree with that. I guess a broken clock, you know. Did he watch the movie? He's calling Catwoman one of Batman's main adversaries in the movie, but did he miss that they work together the entire movie? Issuing Snyder's morality. What exactly is so morally just about Zack Snyder's portrayal of Batman as opposed to both this new Batman and Christopher Nolan's Batman. What, e what even difference is there in the morality? And what do you consider immoral about Batman in this one? He doesn't say what it is, by the way. He just keeps calling them depraved and immoral and stuff. <laughs> he thinks Watchmen is still unsurpassed. So he's a huge Zack Snyder fan, which... Sorry, Snyder fans, that kind of falls in line with the whole bad taste thing. <laughs> Watchmen appealed to adult sensibilities, did it? <laughs> how, how is Watchmen a more adult movie than The Batman or The Dark Knight or whatever? And keep in mind, I'm not even a big fan of, of those, really. Like, I was saying The Dark Knight doesn't deserve to be in the IMDb Top 250 and whatnot, so... Also, the movie is Watchmen, and he keeps calling it Watchman. It's not Watchman. There's a bunch of them. No coincidence that society's politically progressive stakeholders act as proprietary as corporate stockholders. <laughs> what? This guy's off the fucking deep end. This is po political decadence more than anything else. What the fuck are you talking about? The only political statement in the whole movie is that Violent mass shooting incels are bad. That's not a political message you can agree with. You like violent incels, Armand White? Is that what you're telling me? I guess. I, maybe that's his, his readership. One is merely offended by Reeves's obvious political allegories that are too vague and trite to take seriously. How can they be obvious and political decadence while being too vague? Can't be both. Armand. Oh, he, he gets, he sneaks an anti-vax message into his review of the Batman. That's the kind of guy we're dealing with. This is what I'm, what I'm finding out now. Superficial exploitation similar to the health department's unending COVID vaccine commercials. Fear is a tool. I thought he just had bad taste. I didn't know he was like a, a, a political hog, you know? I don't even like the Batman all that much, really. But the things that he takes issue with are not the issues with the movie. He's just making up political stuff to, to, to cry about. Okay, the worst person in the world, universally acclaimed movie, one of the best movies of the year without a doubt. Let's see what Armand White has to say about the worst person in the world. The worst role model in the movies. Is, she, is he talking about the main character? Because I don't know how you would even walk away with the assumption that she's supposed to be a role model. The Oscar-nominated melodrama justifies millennial egotism. The film's current Oscar-related showing was preceded by an endorsement from Team Obama? Did that actually happen? Okay, he links to it. I, I was not aware of this. I didn't know Barack Obama put out a list of his favorite movies of 2021. Okay, I guess that's what he's referring to. Um, I don't give a shit what Obama's favorite movies are, either. So I guess I agree with him on that. Well, no, because he cares very much what Obama's favorite movies are. I don't care what Obama's movies are. This guy's angry at whatever Obama's favorite movies are. I wouldn't be surprised if that's why Armand White dislikes this movie, because Obama likes it, and that's enough for him to hate it. That's how these political fucking idiots function. On looks alone, the film's lead actress is media ordinary. And now he's just being sexist, too. <laughs> What? This guy is the worst. Oh my god. He, I think he is the worst film critic. <laughs> the worst I've ever looked into, by the way. Jesus Christ. Her Caucasian paleness? What are you talking about? 
takes advantage of her sexual autonomy. This guy thinks that women having any bodily autonomy is bad and that that's setting a bad role model. That, that's what he's talking about for role model? The fact that she has sexual autonomy makes her a bad role model? Yeah, she's a millennial role model, he says. I can't fucking believe this guy. I was prepared for this video to go into to debunk some bad taste. I wasn't prepared for this to be <laughs> to be all political. This guy's a piece of shit. Because it's not taste. Every review I've looked at from this guy has just been about politics, that he's either projecting onto the movie or he's objecting to some kind of political message he's perceiving in the movie. He isn't even saying anything about like the filmmaking or the story or in any of these reviews. He's just talking about the politics of it. Oh, so he, he's, he's religious too. That is, it is no surprise at all that he's some Christian Jesus freak. Because he's talking about Bible quotes, Psalm 22, fuck off. Because that's another, you know, 97% fresh and he's, he's in the little rotten patch. I, I can understand people not liking this movie though. Because there are, you know, it's, it's a little bit, uh, I wouldn't quite say impenetrable, but it's definitely slow and it's long. I can get people not liking this, but let's see if those are his issues with it. Is he saying it's slow and long and it's, it's dense and it's impenetrable? I think it's a great movie, but I could understand someone having an issue with it. But let's see what his issue with it. Is, it, is his problem that it's not white men in the lead characters, even though it's a Japanese movie? Is that his problem with it? Don't confuse Drive My Car with the Beatles song, Drive My Car. Who the fuck is going to confuse that? Nobody is going to make that mistake, Armand. That's your opening line, come on. The exaggerated praise for Drive My Car is another indication of film culture's decline. Dude, if anyone is causing a decline in film culture, it is you. Oh my god, here it is. Okay, I, I made it pretty far through this one without finding any, like, too ridiculous political stuff. But then here we go. Adding a deaf-mute actress to deliver Sonia's famous closing lines is shameless, but PC reviewers don't respond to the beautiful Christian vein, only to this production's emphasis on pity. So he's mad that there's an actor in the movie who is deaf and mute. That outrages him. That makes him mad. For what fucking reason, Armand? Why, why does it bother you that a deaf and mute actress is in the movie? What possible reason does it have to upset you? Because they, because people don't like the b beautiful Christian faith being in movies? What does that have to do with anything? This movie's not about religion. People like Armand hate seeing anybody who's from any kind of underrepresented group get any kind of spotlight or attention. And there's no reason to be angry about that. Why should it bother you? What impact does it have on you? that an actress who is deaf and mute gets to have a good role in a movie. What is there to possibly get angry about? Ask yourself that question, Armand. What makes you angry about that? Because your reason here makes no sense. You're completely deflecting. What does PC reviewers not responding to the beautiful Christian thing have anything to do with a deaf and mute actress being in the movie? Those are completely unrelated topics. Millennial nihilism. Even just the phrase millennial nihilism is such a red flag. Okay, let's check out Belfast because I actually didn't like Belfast either. I would, I would give it a rotten score as well, even though it is certified fresh. So let's see if he can make it through this without, I really doubt he can make it through this without making it somehow about millennials who he seems to really hate or about just the PC police or whatever. I agree with this entire first paragraph. I do. I, I don't think the Van Morrison songs are used well. I think they feel out of place and they're just really clunky. I think the shift from color to black and white is a little ridiculous. I hated the travelogue footage. thought it looked stupid. Um, and I think it does kind of show Brandon's lack of imagination. I actually agree with a whole paragraph from Armand White. Because also, he's finally saying things about the movie and the directorial decisions and not just about... He's not talking about these weird political fixations that he's thrusting out of the movie in this instance. The romantic ethnicity being peddled? What the fuck does that even mean? The romantic ethnicity. The phrase romantic ethnicity doesn't even return any, like, Google results. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Romantic ethnicity. Okay, here we go. He's criticizing the camera. His camera work, which I agree with. I think the camera work is bad. And it does seem, I wouldn't say disconnected from culture. I would say it feels 
disconnected from the uh, story and the emotions of the characters. All right, well, I got to the end of that review. There we go. There's one review that's not bad. I, I agree with a lot of the criticisms he puts out for the film. And he Armand doesn't tailspin into some weird political polemic in this one. So, okay, not every review is awful. That's the first one I've found. I've looked through a whole bunch. Probably more than are in this video. I'm going to edit out some of these. The French Dispatch shows why we no longer trust the media. I, oh, I especially... First off, this isn't like a movie about the media. It's about a tiny literary journal in a fictional French town. You're going to try to make that a whole point about trusting the media, the mainstream media, a millennial creation. He's obsessed with this millennial thing. Now, when journalistic integrity is most suspect, the French Dispatch seems mistimed and miscalculated. So his main issue with the French Dispatch is that he views the film as supporting the New Yorker, which is left-wing. And he wants instead Wes Anderson to be basing it on some right-wing publication. That's his like entire issue with the movie. That's so pathetic, Armand. Grow up, dude. Let's see if he calls No Time to Die too woke. It's a fucking James Bond movie. Let's see if he calls it woke. James Bond gets COVID in No Time to Die. What the fuck kind of a headline is that? It's not true. He doesn't get COVID and what are you talking about? This man really wrote following the culture's worst hipster nihilist tendency. How the fuck can you write the hyphenated phrase hipster nihilist without cringing in on yourself and imploding? Oh my God, I, I was like half joking when I said this. They've made the Bond movies hideously woke. <laughs> what is woke about the, the Bond movies? That they made him a little bit less of a misogynist? That's too woke for you? Apply fiendish, selfish, me too script doctoring. So he's anti the Me Too movement. You can see how all these right-wing things all mesh together. You know, it's pro-Christianity always. It's anti-Me Too always. It's anti-woke, anti-mainstream media. It's all the same things. Unmotivated by patriotism. He wants there to be more patriotism in James Bond. Remember the good old days when James Bond was patriotic? You forget the fact that he's British, patriotic for the, for the British Empire. Yep, okay. Racial solidarity with Jeffrey Wright's black mercenary Phoenix Lighter. What is your problem, dude? I know Armand White is a black man, but he really writes as if he's a white supremacist. A pointlessly gay husband. If you ever write the phrase calling someone pointlessly gay, you are homophobic. Plain and simple. You can't call someone pointlessly gay and not be homophobic. You're a homophobe, Armand. You're also sexist and misogynist and, and a Christian nationalist, it would appear. A white supremacist, possibly. You're a piece of shit, dude. Okay, yeah, Armand White, I, I am ready to conclude. Yes, he is, in fact, the world's worst film critic. This guy sucks ass. He can go fuck himself. When he's not even reviewing the movies most of the time, he's mostly just spewing anti-political correctness rhetoric. Like he said so little about the actual movie. It was all complaining about how there's a black character with a big role and how there's a gay character. He's a pointlessly gay character. If those are your objections to the movie, you're not a film critic. You're just bigoted. And I think that's where I'll end it. At least for today. I might revisit our bond wife because I'm sure the rabbit hole goes deeper. I was only looking at his movies from like 2021 onward, his reviews from just the last two years. Um, okay, so fuck him. If you agree with him, fuck you too <laughs> on his political stuff. If you agree with him that uh, Belfast wasn't a great movie, then okay. I don't know how he got through that review without getting all anti-woke. That was the only review of his I found out of the like 20 that I looked at. You probably only saw a smaller number in the review. Out of the 20 or so that I looked at just now, <laughs> Belfast was the only one where he didn't tailspin into some right-wing rhetoric. Anyway, if you enjoy this kind of thing, you can subscribe uh, and stick around if you feel like it. I don't really care. I usually review movies myself. Check out my, uh, my tier list, my video essays, my movie reviews to hear, uh, hear some of my film criticism. I promise I never start tailspinning into uh, the movie being too woke.
I, I promise you, I will never criticize movie for having a pointlessly gay character. He's just Jordan Peterson as a film critic. <laughs> that's all he is. Uh, okay, well, that's the end of the video. So long. And uh, one last little fuck you to our, by the way. How about that?